Milk, Wikipedia article audio. Milk is a white liquid produced by the mammary glands of mammals. It is the primary source of nutrition for infant mammals before they are able to digest other types of food. Early lactation milk contains colostrum, which carries the mother's antibodies to its young and can reduce the risk of many diseases. It contains many other nutrients including protein and lactose. Etymology Types of Consumption Nutrition for Infant Mammals Food Product for Humans Terminology Evolution of Lactation History Industrialization Overproduction Sources Other animal-based sources Production worldwide Production yields Price Grading Physical and chemical properties pH Lipids Proteins Caseins Salts, minerals, and vitamins Calcium phosphate structure Carbohydrates and miscellaneous contents Appearance Processing Pasteurization As an agricultural product, milk is extracted from non-human mammals during or soon after pregnancy. Dairy farms produced about 730 million tons of milk in 2011, from 260 million dairy cows. India is the world's largest producer of milk, and is the leading exporter of schemed milk powder, yet it exports few other milk products. The ever-increasing rise in domestic demand for dairy products and a large demand supply gap could lead to India being a net importer of dairy products in the future. The United States, India, China, and Brazil are the world's largest exporters of milk and milk products. China and Russia were the world's largest importers of milk and milk products until 2016 when both countries became self-sufficient, contributing to a worldwide glut of milk. Microfiltration Creaming and homogenization Throughout the world, more than 6 billion people consume milk and milk products. Over 750 million people live in dairy farming households. UHT Nutrition and Health The term milk comes from Old English mialuk, milk, from Proto-Germanic asterisk malux milk. Milk consumption occurs in two distinct overall types a natural source of nutrition for all infant mammals and a food product obtained from other mammals for consumption by humans of all ages. In almost all mammals, milk is fed to infants through breastfeeding, either directly or by expressing the milk to be stored and consumed later. The early milk from mammals is called colostrum. Colostrum contains antibodies that provide protection to the newborn baby as well as nutrients and growth factors. The makeup of the colostrum and the period of secretion varies from species to species. For humans, the World Health Organization recommends exclusive breastfeeding for six months and breastfeeding in addition to other food for at least two years. In some cultures it is common to breastfeed children for three to five years, and the period may be longer. Fresh goat's milk is sometimes substituted for breast milk, which introduces the risk of the child developing electrolyte imbalances, metabolic acidosis, megaloblastic anemia, and a host of allergic reactions. In many cultures, especially in the West, Humans continue to consume milk beyond infancy, using the milk of other mammals as a food product. Initially, 
the ability to digest milk was limited to children as adults did not produce lactase, an enzyme necessary for digesting the lactose in milk. People therefore converted milk to curd, cheese, and other products to reduce the levels of lactose. Thousands of years ago, a chance mutation spread in human populations in Europe that enabled the production of lactase in adulthood. This mutation allowed milk to be used as a new source of nutrition which could sustain populations when other food sources failed. People process milk into a variety of products such as cream, butter, yogurt, kefir, ice cream, and cheese. Modern industrial processes use milk to produce casein, whey protein, lactose, condensed milk, powdered milk, and many other food additives and industrial products. Whole milk, butter, and cream have high levels of saturated fat. The sugar lactose is found only in milk, forsythia flowers, and a few tropical shrubs. The enzyme needed to digest lactose, lactase, reaches its highest levels in the human small intestine after birth and then begins a slow decline unless milk is consumed regularly. Those groups who do continue to tolerate milk, however, often have exercised great creativity in using the milk of domesticated ungulates, not only of cattle, but also sheep, goats, yaks, water buffalo, horses, reindeer and camels. India is the largest producer and consumer of cattle and buffalo milk in the world. In food use, the term milk is defined under Codex Alimentarius standards as the normal mammary secretion of milking animals obtained from one or more milkings without either addition to it or extraction from it, intended for consumption as liquid milk or for further processing. This definition thereby precludes non-animal products which may resemble milk in color and texture such as soy milk, rice milk, almond milk, and coconut milk. The correct name for such products are soy beverage, rice beverage, etc. Dairy relates to milk and milk production, e.g. dairy products. In addition, a substance secreted by pigeons to feed their young is called crop milk and bears some resemblance to mammalian milk, although it is not consumed as a milk substitute. The mammary gland is thought to have derived from apocrine skin glands. It has been suggested that the original function of lactation was keeping eggs moist. Much of the argument is based on monotremes. The original adaptive significance of milk secretions may have been nutrition or immunological protection. This secretion gradually became more copious and accrued nutritional complexity over evolutionary time. Tridilodontid cynodonts seem to have displayed lactation, based on their dental replacement patterns. Humans first learned to consume the milk of other mammals regularly following the domestication of animals during the Neolithic Revolution or the development of agriculture. This development occurred independently in several global locations from as early as 9000-7000 BC in Mesopotamia to 3500-3000 BC in the Americas. People first domesticated the most important dairy animals cattle, sheep, and goats in Southwest Asia, although domestic cattle had been independently derived from wild aurochs populations several times since. Initially animals were kept for meat, and archaeologist Andrew Sherat has suggested that dairying, along with the exploitation of domestic animals for hair and labor, began much later in a separate secondary products revolution in the 4th millennium BC. Sherat's model is not supported by recent findings, based on the analysis of lipid residue in prehistoric pottery, that shows that dairying was practiced in the early phases of agriculture in Southwest Asia, by at least the 7th millennium BC. From Southwest Asia domestic dairy animals spread to Europe, and South Asia. 
the first farmers in Central Europe and Britain milked their animals. Pastoral and pastoral nomadic economies, which rely predominantly or exclusively on domestic animals and their products rather than crop farming, were developed as European farmers moved into the Pontic Caspian steppe in the 4th millennium BC, and subsequently spread across much of the Eurasian steppe. Sheep and goats were introduced to Africa from Southwest Asia, but African cattle may have been independently domesticated around 7000-6000 BC. Camels, domesticated in Central Arabia in the 4th millennium BC, have also been used as dairy animals in North Africa and the Arabian Peninsula. The earliest Egyptian records of burn treatments describe burn dressings using milk from mothers of male babies. In the rest of the world milk and dairy products were historically not a large part of the diet, either because they remained populated by hunter-gatherers who did not keep animals or the local agricultural economies did not include domesticated dairy species. Milk consumption became common in these regions comparatively recently, as a consequence of European colonialism and political domination over much of the world in the last 500 years. In the Middle Ages, milk was called the virtuous white liquor because alcoholic beverages were safer to consume than water. The growth in urban population, coupled with the expansion of the railway network in the mid-19th century, brought about a revolution in milk production and supply. Individual railway firms began transporting milk from rural areas to London from the 1840s and 1850s. Possibly the first such instance was in 1846, when St. Thomas's Hospital in Southwark contracted with milk suppliers outside London to ship milk by rail. The Great Western Railway was an early and enthusiastic adopter, and began to transport milk into London from Maidenhead in 1860, despite much criticism. By 1900, the company was transporting over 25 million gallons annually. The milk trade grew slowly through the 1860s, but went through a period of extensive, structural change in the 1870s and 1880s. Urban demand began to grow, as consumer purchasing power increased and milk became regarded as a required daily commodity. Over the last three decades of the 19th century, demand for milk in most parts of the country doubled, or in some cases, tripled. Legislation in 1875 made the adulteration of milk illegal, this combined with a marketing campaign to change the image of milk. The proportion of rural imports by rail as a percentage of total milk consumption in London grew from under 5% in the 1860s to over 96% by the early 20th century. By that point, the supply system for milk was the most highly organized and integrated of any food product. The first glass bottle packaging for milk was used in the 1870s. The first company to do so may have been the New York Dairy Company in 1877. The Express Dairy Company in England began glass bottle production in 1880. In 1884, Hervey Thatcher, an American inventor from New York, invented a glass milk bottle, called Thatcher's Common Sense Milk Jar, which was sealed with a waxed paper disc. Later, in 1932, plastic-coated paper milk cartons were introduced commercially. In 1863, French chemist and biologist Louis Pasteur invented pasteurization, a method of killing harmful bacteria in beverages and food products. He developed this method while on summer vacation in Arbois, to remedy the frequent acidity of the local wines. 
he found out experimentally that it is sufficient to heat a young wine to only about 50-60 degrees C for a brief time to kill the microbes, and that the wine could be nevertheless properly aged without sacrificing the final quality. In honor of Pasteur, the process became known as pasteurization. Pasteurization was originally used as a way of preventing wine and beer from souring. Commercial pasteurizing equipment was produced in Germany in the 1880s, and producers adopted the process in Copenhagen and Stockholm by 1885. Continued improvements in the efficiency of milk production led to a worldwide glut of milk by 2016. Russia and China became self-sufficient and stopped importing milk. Canada has tried to restrict milk production by forcing new farmers slash increased capacity to buy in at CN$24,000 per cow. Importing milk is prohibited. The European Union theoretically stopped subsidizing dairy farming in 2015. Direct subsidies were replaced by environmental incentives which results in the government buying milk when the price falls to 200 euros per 1,000 liters. The United States has a voluntary insurance program that pays farmers depending upon the price of milk and the cost of feed. The females of all mammal species can by definition produce milk, but cow's milk dominates commercial production. In 2011, FAO estimates 85% of all milk worldwide was produced from cows. Human milk is not produced or distributed industrially or commercially, however, human milk banks collect donated human breast milk and redistribute it to infants who may benefit from human milk for various reasons but who cannot breastfeed. In the Western world, Cow's milk is produced on an industrial scale and is by far the most commonly consumed form of milk. Commercial dairy farming using automated milking equipment produces the vast majority of milk in developed countries. Dairy cattle such as the Holstein have been bred selectively for increased milk production. About 90% of the dairy cows in the United States and 85% in Great Britain are Holsteins. Other dairy cows in the United States include Ayrshire, Brown Swiss, Guernsey, Jersey and Milking Shorthorn. Aside from cattle, many kinds of livestock provide milk used by humans for dairy products. These animals include buffalo, goat, sheep, camel, donkey, horse, reindeer, and yak. The first four respectively produced about 11%, 2%, 1.4%, and 0.2% of all milk worldwide in 2011. In Russia and Sweden, small moose dairies also exist. According to the U.S. National Bison Association, American bison are not milked commercially, however, various sources report cows resulting from cross-breeding bison and domestic cattle are good milk producers, and have been used both during the European settlement of North America and during the development of commercial beef follow in the 1970s and 1980s. Swine are almost never milked even though their milk is similar to cow's milk and perfectly suitable for human consumption. The main reasons for this are that milking a sow's numerous small teats is very cumbersome, and that sows can't store their milk as cows can. A few pig farms do sell pig cheese as a novelty item, these cheeses are exceedingly expensive. In 2012, the largest producer of milk and milk products was India followed by the United States of America, China, Pakistan, and Brazil. All 28 European Union members together produced 153.8 million tons of milk in 2013, the largest by any politico, economic union. Human milk contains, on average, 1.1% protein, 
4.2% fat, 7.0% lactose, and supplies 72 kilocalories of energy per 100 grams, cow's milk contains, on average, 3.4% protein, 3.6% fat, and 4.6% lactose, 0.7% minerals, and supplies 66 kilocalories of energy per 100 grams. See also nutritional value further on. Cow's milk Nutritional value Recommended consumption Medical research Lactose intolerance Possible harms Flavored milk in U.S. schools Bovine growth hormone supplementation Criticism Varieties and brands Reduction or elimination of lactose Additives and flavoring Distribution Australia and New Zealand India Pakistan United Kingdom United States Packaging Spoilage and fermented milk products Use in other food products Language and culture Other uses Biotin, iodine, magnesium, pantothenic acid, potassium, riboflavin, selenium, thiamine, vitamin A, vitamin B12, vitamins D, vitamin K Additives, H, coagulation, farming method, fat content, fermentation, flavoring, homogenization, packaging, pasteurization, reduction or elimination of lactose, species, sweetening, water content. Increasing affluence in developing countries, as well as increased promotion of milk and milk products has led to a rise in milk consumption in developing countries in recent years. In turn, the opportunities presented by these growing markets have attracted investments by multinational dairy firms. Nevertheless, in many countries production remains on a small scale and presents significant opportunities for diversification of income sources by small farms. Local milk collection centers where milk is collected and chilled prior to being transferred to urban dairies, are a good example of where farmers have been able to work on a cooperative basis, particularly in countries such as India. FAO reports Israel dairy farms are the most productive in the world, with a yield of 12,546 kg milk per cow per year. This survey over 2001 and 2007 was conducted by ICAR across 17 developed countries. The survey found that the average herd size in these developed countries increased from 74 to 99 cows per herd between 2001 and 2007. A dairy farm had an average of 19 cows per herd in Norway, and 337 in New Zealand. Annual milk production in the same period increased from 7,726 to 8,550 kg per cow in these developed countries. The lowest average production was in New Zealand at 3,974 kg per cow. The milk yield per cow depended on production systems, nutrition of the cows, and only to a minor extent different genetic potential of the animals. What the cow ate made the most impact on the production obtained. New Zealand cows with the lowest yield per year grazed all year, in contrast to Israel with the highest yield where the cows ate in barns with an energy-rich mixed diet. The milk yield per cow in the United States, the world's largest cow milk producer, was 9,954 kg per year in 2010. 
In contrast, the milk yields per cow in India and China the second and third largest producers were respectively 1,154 kg and 2,282 kg per year. It was reported in 2007 that with increased worldwide prosperity and the competition of biofuel production for feed stocks, both the demand for and the price of milk had substantially increased worldwide. Particularly notable was the rapid increase of consumption of milk in China and the rise of the price of milk in the United States above the government subsidized price. In 2010 the Department of Agriculture predicted farmers would receive an average of $1.35 per U.S. gallon of cow's milk, which is down 30 cents per gallon from 2007 and below the break-even point for many cattle farmers. In the United States, there are two grades of milk, with grade A primarily used for direct sales and consumption in stores, and grade B used for indirect consumption, such as in cheese making or other processing. The differences between the two grades are defined in the Wisconsin Administrative Code for Agriculture, Trade and Consumer Protection, Chapter 60. Grade B generally refers to milk that is cooled in milk cans, which are immersed in a bath of cold flowing water that typically is drawn up from an underground water well rather than using mechanical refrigeration. Milk is an emulsion or colloid of butterfat globules within a water-based fluid that contains dissolved carbohydrates and protein aggregates with minerals. Because it is produced as a food source for the young, all of its contents provide benefits for growth. The principal requirements are energy, biosynthesis of non-essential amino acids supplied by proteins, essential fatty acids, vitamins and inorganic elements, and water. The pH of milk ranges from 6.4 to 6.8 and it changes over time. Milk from other bovines and non-bovine mammals varies in composition, but has a similar pH. Initially milk fat is secreted in the form of a fat globule surrounded by a membrane. Each fat globule is composed almost entirely of triacylglycerols and is surrounded by a membrane consisting of complex lipids such as phospholipids, along with proteins. These act as emulsifiers which keep the individual globules from coalescing and protect the contents of these globules from various enzymes in the fluid portion of the milk. Although 97-98% of lipids are triacylglycerols, small amounts of D and monoacylglycerols, free cholesterol and cholesterol esters, free fatty acids, and phospholipids are also present. Unlike protein and carbohydrates, fat composition in milk varies widely in the composition due to genetic, lactational and nutritional factor difference between different species. Like composition, fat globules vary in size from less than 0.2 to about 15 micrometers in diameter between different species. Diameter may also vary between animals within a species and at different times within a milking of a single animal. In unhomogenized cow's milk, the fat globules have an average diameter of 2 to 4 micrometers and with homogenization, average around 0.4 micrometers. The fat-soluble vitamins A, D, E and K along with essential fatty acids such as linoleic and linolenic acid are found within the milk fat portion of the milk. Normal bovine milk contains 30-35 grams of protein per liter of which about 80% is arranged in casein micelles. Total proteins in milk represent 3.2% of its composition. The largest structures in the fluid portion of the milk are casein micelles, aggregates of several thousand protein molecules with superficial resemblance to a surfactant micelle, bonded with the help of nanometer scale particles of calcium phosphate. 
Each casein micelle is roughly spherical and about a tenth of a micrometer across. There are four different types of casein proteins, alpha S1- alpha S2- beta- and kappa caseins. Collectively, they make up around 76-86% of the protein in milk, by weight. Most of the casein proteins are bound into the micelles. There are several competing theories regarding the precise structure of the micelles, but they share one important feature, the outermost layer consists of strands of one type of protein, K casein, reaching out from the body of the micelle into the surrounding fluid. These kappa casein molecules all have a negative electrical charge and therefore repel each other keeping the micelles separated under normal conditions and in a stable colloidal suspension in the water-based surrounding fluid. Milk contains dozens of other types of proteins beside caseins and including enzymes. These other proteins are more water-soluble than caseins and do not form larger structures. Because the proteins remain suspended in whey remaining when caseins coagulate into curds, they are collectively known as whey proteins. Whey proteins make up approximately 20% of the protein in milk by weight. Lactoglobulin is the most common whey protein by a large margin. Minerals or milk salts, are traditional names for a variety of cations and anions within bovine milk. Calcium, phosphate, magnesium, sodium, potassium, citrate, and chlorine are all included as minerals and they typically occur at concentration of 540 mm. The milk salts strongly interact with casein, most notably calcium phosphate. It is present in excess and often, much greater excess of solubility of solid calcium phosphate. In addition to calcium, milk is a good source of many other vitamins. Vitamins A, B6, B12, C, D, K, E, thiamine, niacin, biotin, riboflavin, folates, and pantothenic acid are all present in milk. For many years the most accepted theory of the structure of a micelle was that it was composed of spherical casein aggregates, called submicelles, that were held together by calcium phosphate linkages. However, there are two recent models of the casein micelle that refute the distinct micellular structures within the micelle. The first theory attributed to de Cruyff and Holt proposes that nanoclusters of calcium phosphate and the phosphopeptide fraction of beta casein are the centerpiece to micellular structure. Specifically in this view, unstructured proteins organize around the calcium phosphate giving rise to their structure and thus no specific structure is formed. The second theory proposed by Horn, the growth of calcium phosphate nanoclusters begins the process of micelle formation but is limited by binding phosphopeptide loop regions of the caseins. Once bound, Protein-protein interactions are formed and polymerization occurs, in which K-casein is used as an end cap, to form micelles with trapped calcium phosphate nanoclusters. Some sources indicate that the trapped calcium phosphate is in the form of Ca96, whereas, others say it is similar to the structure of the mineral brus height CAHPO4-2H2O. Milk contains several different carbohydrates including lactose, glucose, galactose, and other oligosaccharides. The lactose gives milk its sweet taste and contributes approximately 40% of whole cow's milk's calories. Lactose is a disaccharide composite of two simple sugars, glucose and galactose. Bovine milk averages 4.8% anhydrous lactose which amounts to about 50% of the total solids of schemed milk. 
Levels of lactose are dependent upon the type of milk as other carbohydrates can be present at higher concentrations than lactose in milks. Other components found in raw cow's milk are living white blood cells, mammary gland cells, various bacteria, and a large number of active enzymes. Both the fat globules and the smaller casein micelles, which are just large enough to deflect light, contribute to the opaque white color of milk. The fat globules contain some yellow-orange carotene, enough in some breeds to impart a golden or creamy hue to a glass of milk. The riboflavin in the whey portion of milk has a greenish color, which sometimes can be discerned in skimmed milk or whey products. Fat-free skimmed milk has only the casein micelles to scatter light, and they tend to scatter shorter wavelength blue light more than they do red, giving skimmed milk a bluish tint. In most Western countries, centralized dairy facilities process milk and products obtained from milk, such as cream, butter, and cheese. In the U.S., these dairies usually are local companies while in the Southern Hemisphere facilities may be run by very large nationwide or transnational corporations such as Fontera. Pasteurization is used to kill harmful pathogenic bacteria by heating the milk for a short time and then immediately cooling it. Types of pasteurized milk include full cream, reduced fat, skim milk, calcium enriched, flavored, and UHT. The standard high temperature short time process of 72 degrees Celsius for 15 seconds completely kills pathogenic bacteria in milk, rendering it safe to drink for up to three weeks if continually refrigerated. Dairies print best before dates on each container, after which stores remove any unsold milk from their shelves. A side effect of the heating of pasteurization is that some vitamin and mineral content is lost. Soluble calcium and phosphorus decrease by 5%, thiamine and vitamin B12 by 10%, and vitamin C by 20%. Because losses are small in comparison to the large amount of the two B vitamins present, milk continues to provide significant amounts of thiamine and vitamin B12. The loss of vitamin C is not nutritionally significant, as milk is not an important dietary source of vitamin C. Microfiltration is a process that partially replaces pasteurization and produces milk with fewer microorganisms and longer shelf life without a change in the taste of the milk. In this process, Cream is separated from the skimmed milk and is pasteurized in the usual way, but the skimmed milk is forced through ceramic microfilters that trap 99.9% .9 of microorganisms in the milk. The skimmed milk then is recombined with the pasteurized cream to reconstitute the original milk composition. Upon standing for 12 to 24 hours, Fresh milk has a tendency to separate into a high-fat cream layer on top of a larger, low-fat milk layer. The cream often is sold as a separate product with its own uses. Today the separation of the cream from the milk usually is accomplished rapidly in centrifugal cream separators. The fat globules rise to the top of a container of milk because fat is less dense than water. The smaller the globules, the more other molecular level forces prevent this from happening. In fact, the cream rises in cow's milk much more quickly than a simple model would predict. Rather than isolated globules, the fat in the milk tends to form into clusters containing about a million globules, held together by a number of minor whey proteins. These clusters rise faster than individual globules can. The fat globules in milk from goats, sheep, and water buffalo do not form clusters as readily and are smaller to begin with, resulting in a slower separation of cream from these milks. Milk often is homogenized, a treatment that prevents a cream layer from separating out of the milk. 
The milk is pumped at high pressures through very narrow tubes, breaking up the fat globules through turbulence and cavitation. A greater number of smaller particles possess more total surface area than a smaller number of larger ones, and the original fat globule membranes cannot completely cover them. Casein micelles are attracted to the newly exposed fat surfaces. Nearly one-third of the micelles in the milk end up participating in this new membrane structure. The casein weighs down the globules and interferes with the clustering that accelerated separation. The exposed fat globules are vulnerable to certain enzymes present in milk, which could break down the fats and produce rancid flavors. To prevent this, the enzymes are inactivated by pasteurizing the milk immediately before or during homogenization. Homogenized milk tastes blander but feels creamier in the mouth than unhomogenized. It is whiter and more resistant to developing off flavors. Cream line milk is unhomogenized. It may or may not have been pasteurized. Milk that has undergone high pressure homogenization, sometimes labeled as ultra homogenized, has a longer shelf life than milk that has undergone ordinary homogenization at lower pressures. The homogenization process increases the shelf life of milk because it decreases the radius of fat globules and other particles, thus, delaying the rate of agglomeration. Ultra heat treatment is a type of milk processing where all bacteria are destroyed with high heat to extend its shelf life for up to six months, as long as the package is not opened. Milk is firstly homogenized and then is heated to 138 degrees Celsius for 1-3 seconds. The milk is immediately cooled down and packed into a sterile container. As a result of this treatment, all the pathogenic bacteria within the milk are destroyed, unlike when the milk is just paste urist. The milk will now keep for up for six months if unopened. UHT milk does not need to be refrigerated until the package is opened, which makes it easier to ship and store. But in this process there is a loss of vitamin B1 and vitamin C and there is also a slight change in the taste of the milk. The composition of milk differs widely among species. Factors such as the type of protein, the proportion of protein, fat, and sugar, the levels of various vitamins and minerals, and the size of the butterfat globules, and the strength of the curd are among those that may vary. For example, donkey and horse milk have the lowest fat content while the milk of seals and whales may contain more than 50% fat. These compositions vary by breed, animal, and point in the lactation period. The protein range for these four breeds is 3.3% to 3.9%, while the lactose range is 4.7% to 4.9%. Milk fat percentages may be manipulated by dairy farmers' stock diet formulation strategies. Mastitis infection can cause fat levels to decline. CH equals choline, CA equals calcium, FE equals iron, MG equals magnesium, P equals phosphorus, K equals potassium, NA equals sodium. Zn equals zinc, Cu equals copper, Mn equals manganese, Sc equals selenium, percent DV equals percent daily value i.e. percent of DRI note, all nutrient values including protein and fiber are in percent DV per 100 grams of the food item. Significant values are highlighted in light gray color and bold letters. Cooking reduction equals percent maximum typical reduction in nutrients due to boiling without draining for ovolacto vegetables group Q equals quality of protein in terms of completeness without adjusting for digestibility. Processed cow's milk was formulated to contain differing amounts of fat during the 1950s. 
One cup of 2% fat cow's milk contains 285 mg of calcium, which represents 22% to 29% of the daily recommended intake of calcium for an adult. Depending on its age, milk contains 8 grams of protein, and a number of other nutrients including The amount of calcium from milk that is absorbed by the human body is disputed. Calcium from dairy products has a greater bioavailability than calcium from certain vegetables, such as spinach, that contain high levels of calcium chelating agents, but a similar or lesser bioavailability than calcium from low oxalate vegetables such as kale, broccoli, or other vegetables in the Brassica genus. Milk as a calcium source has been questioned in media but scientific research is lacking to support the hypothesis of acidosis induced by milk. The hypothesis in question being that acidosis would lead to leaching of calcium storages in bones to neutralize pH levels. Research has found no link between metabolic acidosis and consumption of milk. The U.S. federal government document Dietary Guidelines for Americans 2010 recommends consumption of three glasses of fat-free or low-fat milk for adults and children nine and older per day. This recommendation is disputed by some health researchers who call for more study of the issue, given that there are other sources for calcium and vitamin D. The researchers also claim that the recommendations have been unduly influenced by the American dairy industry and that whole milk may be better for health due to its increased ability to satiate hunger. A 2008 review found evidence suggesting that consumption of milk is effective at promoting muscle growth. Some studies have suggested that conjugated linoleic acid, which can be found in dairy products, is an effective supplement for reducing body fat. With regards to the claim of milk promoting stronger bones, there has been no association between milk consumption or excess calcium intake and a reduced risk of bone fractures. In 2011, the Journal of Bone and Mineral Research published a meta-analysis examining whether milk consumption might protect against hip fracture in middle-aged and older adults. Studies could find no association between drinking milk and lower rates of fractures. In 2014, JAMA Pediatrics published a report after monitoring almost 100,000 men and women for more than two decades. Subjects were asked to report on how much milk they had consumed as teenagers, and were followed to see if there is any association with a reduced chance of hip fractures later in life, it found there was not any. A study published in the BMJ that followed more than 45,000 men and 61,000 women in Sweden age 39 and older had similar results. Milk consumption in adults was associated with no protection for men, and an increased risk of fractures in women. The risk of any bone fracture increased 16% in women who drank three or more glasses daily, and the risk of a broken hip increased 60%. It was also associated with an increased risk of death in both sexes. Milk and dairy products have the potential for causing serious infection in newborn infants. Unpasteurized milk and cheeses can promote the growth of Listeria bacteria. Listeria monocytogens can also cause serious infection in an infant and pregnant woman and can be transmitted to her infant in utero or after birth. The infection has the potential of seriously harming or even causing the death of a preterm infant, an infant of low or very low birth weight, or an infant with an immune system defect or a congenital defect of the immune system. The presence of this pathogen can sometimes be determined by the symptoms that appear as a gastrointestinal illness in the mother. The mother can also acquire infection from ingesting food that contains other animal products such as, hot dogs, delicatessen meats, and cheese. 
lactose, the disaccharide sugar component of all milk, must be cleaved in the small intestine by the enzyme lactase, in order for its constituents, galactose and glucose, to be absorbed. Lactose intolerance is a condition in which people have symptoms due to not enough of the enzyme lactase in the small intestines. Those affected vary in the amount of lactose they can tolerate before symptoms develop. These may include abdominal pain, bloating, diarrhea, gas, and nausea. Severity depends on the amount a person eats or drinks. Those affected are usually able to drink at least one cup of milk without developing significant symptoms, with greater amounts tolerated if drunk with a meal or throughout the day. Lactose intolerance does not cause damage to the gastrointestinal tract. There are four types, primary, secondary, developmental, and congenital. Primary lactose intolerance is when the amount of lactase decline as people age. Secondary lactose intolerance is due to injury to the small intestine such as from infection, celiac disease, inflammatory bowel disease, or other diseases. Developmental lactose intolerance may occur in premature babies and usually improves over a short period of time. Congenital lactose intolerance is an extremely rare genetic disorder in which little or no lactase is made from birth. When lactose intolerance is due to secondary lactase deficiency, treatment of the underlying disease allows lactase activity to return to normal levels. Lactose intolerance is different from a milk allergy. The number of people with lactose intolerance is unknown. Some human populations have developed lactase persistence, in which lactase production continues into adulthood probably as a response to the benefits of being able to digest milk from farm animals. The percentage of the population that has a decrease in lactase as they age is less than 10% in Northern Europe and as high as 95% in parts of Asia and Africa. Some studies suggest that milk consumption may increase the risk of suffering from certain health problems. Cow's milk allergy is an immunologically mediated adverse reaction, rarely fatal, to one or more cow's milk proteins. Milk from any mammal contains amino acids and MICR orna which influence the drinker's metabolism and growth. This programming is beneficial for milk's natural consumers namely infants of the same species as the milk producer, but post-infancy and trans-species milk consumption affects the MTORC1 metabolic pathway and may promote diseases of civilization such as obesity and diabetes. Milk contains exogenous opioid peptides called EXORFINs which include opioid food peptides like gluten EXORFIN and opioid food peptides. EXORFINs mimic the actions of endorphins because they bind to the same opioid receptors in the brain. The EXORFIN in milk is called casein, a substance that breaks down in the human stomach to produce the opioid peptide casomorphin. In the early 1990s it was hypothesized that casomorphin can cause or aggravate autism spectrum disorders and casein-free diets are widely promoted. Studies supporting these claims have had significant flaws, and the data are inadequate to guide autism treatment recommendations. The most recent assessment by the World Cancer Research Fund and the American Institute for Cancer Research found that most individual epidemiological studies showed increased risk of prostate cancer with increased intake of milk or dairy products. Meta-analysis of cohort data produced evidence of a clear dose-response relationship between advanced-slash-aggressive cancer risk with milk intake, and between all prostate cancer risk and milk and dairy products. Possible mechanisms proposed included inhibition of the conversion of vitamin D to its active metabolite, 
1,25 dihydroxy vitamin D3 by calcium, and elevation of levels of insulin like growth factor 1. Several sources suggest a correlation between high calcium intake from milk, in particular, and prostate cancer, consistent with a calcium slash vitamin D based mechanism. Overall, the WCRF slash AICR panel concluded that the evidence is inconsistent from both cohort and case control studies. There is limited evidence suggesting that milk and dairy products are a cause of prostate cancer. Medical studies also have shown a possible link between milk consumption and the exacerbation of diseases such as Crohn's disease, Hirschsprung's disease mimicking symptoms in babies with existing cow's milk allergies, and the aggravation of Bayset's disease. Milk must be offered at every meal if a United States school district wishes to get reimbursement from the federal government. A quarter of the largest school districts in the U.S. offer rice or soy milk and almost 17% of all U.S. school districts offer lactose-free milk. 71% of the milk served in U.S. school cafeterias is flavored causing some school districts to propose a ban because flavored milk has added sugars. The Boulder, Colorado, school district banned flavored milk in 2009 and instead installed a dispenser that keeps the milk colder. Since November 1993, recombinant bovine somatotropin, also called RBGH, has been sold to dairy farmers with FDA approval. Cows produce bovine growth hormone naturally, but some producers administer an additional recombinant version of BGH which is produced through genetically engineered E. coli to increase milk production. Bovine growth hormone also stimulates liver production of insulin-like growth factor 1. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration the National Institutes of Health and the World Health Organization have reported that both of these compounds are safe for human consumption at the amounts present. On June 9, 2006, the largest milk processor in the world and the two largest supermarkets in the United States Dean Foods, Walmart, and Kroger announced that they are on a nationwide search for RBGH-free milk. Milk from cows given RBST may be sold in the United States, and the FDA stated that no significant difference has been shown between milk derived from RBST treated and that from non-RBST treated cows. Milk that advertises that it comes from cows not treated with RBST, is required to state this finding on its label. Cows receiving RBGH supplements may more frequently contract an udder infection known as mastitis. Problems with mastitis have led to Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and Japan banning milk from RBST-treated cows. Mastitis, among other diseases, may be responsible for the fact that levels of white blood cells in milk vary naturally. RBGH is also banned in the European Union. Vegans and some other vegetarians do not consume milk for reasons mostly related to animal rights and environmental concerns. They may object to features of dairy farming including the necessity of keeping dairy cows pregnant, the killing of almost all the male offspring of dairy cows, the routine separation of mother and calf soon after birth other perceived inhumane treatment of dairy cattle, and culling of cows after their productive lives. Some have criticized the American government's promotion of milk consumption. Their main concern is the financial interest that the American government has taken in the dairy industry, promoting milk as the best source of calcium. All United States schools that are a part of the federally funded National School Lunch Act are required by the federal government to provide milk for all students. The Office of Dietary Supplements recommends that healthy adults between ages 19 and 50 get about 1,000 mg of calcium per day. 
Milk production is also resource intensive. On a global weighted average, for the production of a given volume of milk, a thousand times as much water has to be used. Milk products are sold in a number of varieties based on types slash degrees of Milk preserved by the UHT process does not need to be refrigerated before opening and has a much longer shelf life than milk in ordinary packaging. It is typically sold unrefrigerated in the UK, US, Europe, Latin America, and Australia. Lactose-free milk can be produced by passing milk over lactase enzyme bound to an inert carrier. Once the molecule is cleaved, there are no lactose ill effects. Forms are available with reduced amounts of lactose, and alternatively with nearly 0%. The only noticeable difference from regular milk is a slightly sweeter taste due to the generation of glucose by lactose cleavage. It does not, however, contain more glucose and is nutritionally identical to regular milk. Finland, where approximately 17% of the Finnish-speaking population has high polyctasia, has had Hyla products available for many years. Lactose of low-lactose level cow's milk products, ranging from ice cream to cheese, is enzymatically hydrolyzed into glucose and galactose. The ultra-pasteurization process, combined with aseptic packaging, ensures a long shelf life. In 2001, Valio launched a lactose-free milk drink that is not sweet like Hyla milk but has the fresh taste of ordinary milk. Valio patented the chromatographic separation method to remove lactose. Valio also markets these products in Sweden, Estonia, Belgium, and the United States, where the company says ultrafiltration is used. In the UK, where an estimated 4.7% of the population are affected by lactose intolerance, Lactafree produces milk, cheese, and yogurt products that contain only 0.03% lactose. To aid digestion in those with lactose intolerance, milk with added bacterial cultures such as Lactobacillus acidophilus and Bifidobacteria is available in some areas. Another milk with Lactococcus lactobacteria cultures often is used in cooking to replace the traditional use of naturally soured milk, which has become rare due to the ubiquity of pasteurization which also kills the naturally occurring Lactococcus bacteria. In areas where the cattle live indoors, commercially sold milk commonly has vitamin D added to it to make up for lack of exposure to UVB radiation. Reduced fat milks often have added vitamin A palmitate to compensate for the loss of the vitamin during fat removal. In the United States this results in reduced fat milks having a higher vitamin A content than whole milk. Milk often has flavoring added to it for better taste or as a means of improving sales. Chocolate milk has been sold for many years and has been followed more recently by strawberry milk and others. Some nutritionists have criticized flavored milk for adding sugar usually in the form of high fructose corn syrup, to the diets of children who are already commonly obese in the U.S. Due to the short shelf life of normal milk, it used to be delivered to households daily in many countries, however, improved refrigeration at home, changing food shopping patterns because of supermarkets, and the higher cost of home delivery mean that daily deliveries by a milkman are no longer available in most countries. In Australia and New Zealand, prior to metrication, milk was generally distributed in one pint glass bottles. In Australia and Ireland there was a government-funded free milk for school children program, and milk was distributed at morning recess in one-third pint bottles. With the conversion to metric measures, 
the milk industry were concerned that the replacement of the pint bottles with 500 ml bottles would result in a 13.6% drop in milk consumption, hence, all pint bottles were recalled and replaced by 600 ml bottles. With time, due to the steadily increasing cost of collecting, transporting, storing, and cleaning glass bottles, they were replaced by cardboard cartons. A number of designs were used, including a tetrahedron which could be close-packed without waste space, and could not be knocked over accidentally. However, the industry eventually settled on a design similar to that used in the United States. Milk is now available in a variety of sizes in cardboard cartons and plastic bottles. A significant addition to the marketplace has been long-life milk, generally available in 1 and 2 liter rectangular cardboard cartons. In urban and suburban areas where there is sufficient demand, home delivery is still available, though in suburban areas this is often three times per week rather than daily. Another significant and popular addition to the marketplace has been flavored milks for example, as mentioned above, Farmers Union Iced Coffee outsells Coca-Cola in South Australia. In rural India, milk is home delivered, daily, by local milkmen carrying bulk quantities in a metal container, usually on a bicycle. In other parts of metropolitan India, milk is usually bought or delivered in plastic bags or cartons via shops or supermarkets. The current milk chain flow in India is from milk producer to milk collection agent. Then it is transported to a milk chilling center and bulk transported to the processing plant, then to the sales agent and finally to the consumer. A 2011 survey by the Food Safety and Standards Authority of India found that nearly 70% of samples had not conformed to the standards set for milk. The study found that due to lack of hygiene and sanitation in milk handling and packaging, detergents were not washed properly and found their way into the milk. About 8% of samples in the survey were found to have detergents, which are hazardous to health. In Pakistan, milk is supplied in jugs. Milk has been a staple food, especially among the pastoral tribes in this country. Since the late 1990s, milk buying patterns have changed drastically in the UK. The classic milkman, who travels his local milk round using a milk float during the early hours and delivers milk in one pint glass bottles with aluminium foil tops directly to households, has almost disappeared. Two of the main reasons for the decline of UK home deliveries by milkmen are household refrigerators and private car usage. Another factor is that it is cheaper to purchase milk from a supermarket than from home delivery. In 1996, more than 2.5 billion litres of milk were still being delivered by milkmen but by 2006 only 637 million litres was delivered by some 9,500 milkmen. By 2010, the estimated number of milkmen had dropped to 6,000. Assuming that delivery per milkman is the same as it was in 2006, 2006, this means milkmen deliveries now only account for 6-7% of all milk consumed by UK households. Almost 95% of all milk in the UK is thus sold in shops today, most of it in plastic bottles of various sizes, but some also in milk cartons. Milk is hardly ever sold in glass bottles in UK shops. In the United States, glass milk bottles have been replaced mostly with milk cartons and plastic jugs. Gallons of milk are almost always sold in jugs, while half gallons and quarts may be found in both paper cartons and plastic jugs, and smaller sizes are almost always in cartons.
The half pint point five U.S. pints milk carton is the traditional unit as a component of school lunches, though some companies have replaced that unit size with a plastic bottle, which is also available at retail in 6 and 12 pack size. Glass milk bottles are now rare. Most people purchase milk in bags, plastic bottles, or plastic-coated paper cartons. Ultraviolet light from fluorescent lighting can alter the flavor of milk, so many companies that once distributed milk in transparent or highly translucent containers are now using thicker materials that block the UV light. Milk comes in a variety of containers with local variants. Commonly sold in one liter bags and cardboard boxes. The bag is then placed in a plastic jug and the corner cut off before the milk is poured. Practically everywhere, condensed milk and evaporated milk are distributed in metal cans, 250 and 125 ml paper containers and 100 and 200 ml squeeze tubes and powdered milk is distributed in boxes or bags. When raw milk is left standing for a while, it turns sour. This is the result of fermentation, where lactic acid bacteria ferment the lactose in the milk into lactic acid. Prolonged fermentation may render the milk unpleasant to consume. This fermentation process is exploited by the introduction of bacterial cultures to produce a variety of fermented milk products. The reduced pH from lactic acid accumulation denatures proteins and causes the milk to undergo a variety of different transformations in appearance and texture, ranging from an aggregate to smooth consistency. Some of these products include sour cream, yogurt, cheese, buttermilk, aili, kefir, and kumis. See dairy product for more information. Pasteurization of cow's milk initially destroys any potential pathogens and increases the shelf life, but eventually results in spoilage that makes it unsuitable for consumption. This causes it to assume an unpleasant odor and the milk is deemed non-consumable due to unpleasant taste and an increased risk of food poisoning. In raw milk, the presence of lactic acid-producing bacteria, under suitable conditions, ferments the lactose present to lactic acid. The increasing acidity in turn prevents the growth of other organisms, or slows their growth significantly. During pasteurization, however, these lactic acid bacteria are mostly destroyed. In order to prevent spoilage, milk can be kept refrigerated and stored between 1 and 4 degrees Celsius in bulk tanks. Most milk is pasteurized by heating briefly and then refrigerated to allow transport from factory farms to local markets. The spoilage of milk can be forestalled by using ultra-high temperature treatment. Milk so treated can be stored unrefrigerated for several months until opened but has a characteristic cooked taste. Condensed milk, made by removing most of the water, can be stored in cans for many years, unrefrigerated, as can evaporated milk. The most durable form of milk is powdered milk, which is produced from milk by removing almost all water. The moisture content is usually less than 5% in both drum and spray dried powdered milk. Freezing of milk can cause fat globule aggregation upon thawing, resulting in milky layers and butterfat lumps. These can be dispersed again by warming and stirring the milk. It can change the taste by destruction of milk fat globule membranes, releasing oxidized flavors. Milk is used to make yogurt, cheese, ice milk, pudding, hot chocolate and French toast. Milk is often added to dry breakfast cereal, porridge, and granola. Milk is often served in coffee and tea. Steamed milk is used to prepare espresso-based drinks such as cafe latte.
The importance of milk in human culture is attested to by the numerous expressions embedded in our languages, for example, the milk of human kindness, the expression there's no use crying over spilt milk, don't milk the ram and why buy a cow when you can get milk for free. In ancient Greek mythology, the goddess Hera spilled her breast milk after refusing to feed Heracles, resulting in the Milky Way in the sky. In many African and Asian countries, butter is traditionally made from fermented milk rather than cream. It can take several hours of churning to produce workable butter grains from fermented milk. Holy books have also mentioned milk. The Bible contains references to the land of milk and honey. In the Quran, there is a request to wonder on milk as follows, and surely in the livestock there is a lesson for you, we give you to drink of that which is in their bellies from the midst of digested food and blood, pure milk palatable for the drinkers. The Ramadan fast is traditionally broken with a glass of milk and dates. Abhishika is conducted by Hindu and Jain priests, by pouring libations on the image of a deity being worshipped, amidst the chanting of mantras. Usually offerings such as milk, yogurt, ghee, honey may be poured among other offerings depending on the type of abhishekam being performed. A milksop is an effeminate spiritless man an expression which is attested to in the late 14th century. Milk toast is a dish consisting of milk and toast. Its soft blandness served as inspiration for the name of the timid and ineffectual comic strip character Casper Milk Toast, drawn by H. T. Webster from 1924 to 1952. Thus, the term milk toast entered the language as the label for a timid, shrinking, apologetic person. Milk toast also appeared in Disney's Follow Me Boys as an undesirable breakfast for the aging main character Lem Siddons. To milk someone, in the vernacular of many English-speaking countries, is to take advantage of the person, by analogy to the way a farmer milks a cow and takes its milk. The word milk has had many slang meanings over time. In the 19th century, milk was used to describe a cheap and very poisonous alcoholic drink made from methylated spirits mixed with water. The word was also used to mean defraud, to be idle, to intercept telegrams addressed to someone else, and a weakling or milksop. In the mid-1930s, the word was used in Australia meaning to siphon gas from a car. Besides serving as a beverage or source of food, milk has been described as used by farmers and gardeners as an organic fungicide and fertilizer, however, its effectiveness is debated. Diluted milk solutions have been demonstrated to provide an effective method of preventing powdery mildew on grape vines, while showing it is unlikely to harm the plant.